guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's incredibly windy out on the range, incredibly windy. However, I still want to get out there and take this little crowd out to 100 metres. It's been illuminating already and you guys who watched my last video about, uh, how can we say, calling into question maybe scope cam footage and maybe the flight time on this little crowd and things not adding up on the video I was talking about. Anyway, uh, what can I say? I would not recommend slugs being shot out of this gun. I'm telling you now. Uh, I fired three slugs through this gun and it doesn't like them. The first, the first shot, I cleaned the barrel and all the good stuff, but the first shot I put through this, it sounded, uh, it, was, it was a very weird discharge, should we say. Uh, it, the slug basically spluttered out the end of the barrel. Um, I, I was slowed not on single shot trays because I had a feeling something like this would happen, and it did. The second shot wasn't a lot better. Um, I'm questioning whether these Pro Hunter slugs are suitable for this barrel. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe these Turkish barrels are choked. Uh, if you're going to shoot slugs, you really needed a need an FAC rated rifle. Uh, and or a dedicated um, barrel for them. I'm already questioning uh, the results I saw on the other chance video. So I'm still going to get out to 100 metres, but I'm not shooting slugs through this, absolutely no way. I have a feeling if I do, I'm going to absolutely, totally, nutly bugger this gun up. Um, I'm going to put some heavyweight pellets through it. Now I understand pellets will have a different ballistic coefficient from slugs. However, at least they'll fire through the barrel, eh? And um, I'll try to put some heavyweight pellets through. I'll put a couple of different types, I think. And I just want to demonstrate what made me doubt the other video to start with. The flight time. Now I've, I've just zeroed this uh, with um, oh god H and N Barracuda I think they are and already at 40 meters the flight time is longer than what I saw on that video at 100 meters. I don't know really. I'm I'm questioning my sanity doing this because I already know that. Those results before were not accurate, and they were not accurate of the best, and they were just damn false at the worst. I um, don't know why anyone would want to do that. I've just wasted money buying slugs. Um, I'll probably stick them for an FAC rated rifle. Um, but yeah, my take from it so far please don't use slugs in this. and think that you're going to be any Oakley at 100 metres because that ain't going to happen. Uh, I will just say, uh, I'm going to put a scope cam on and I'll, I'll, I'll show you um, what I'm talking about at 40 metres. It is incredibly windy out on the range. I'm still going to attempt to do a I'm not going to even go for groups or anything like that. I'm just going to see if I can hit a 12 inch splatter burst and I'll be happy if I can because I know the pellets are going to be flying all over with the wind and uh, yeah uh, also I'll put the camera over my shoulder and I'll stick the coat cam on. Now I'm not very good with technology on telling you now so what I'll do is I'll film me over the shoulder but also film at the same time the scope cam footage whether I'll be able to manage to get it to be picture in picture on the video what I'll post up 
I don't know, it, it might work out really well. But if I can't do the picture in picture, what you'll see is uh, the scope cam footage anyway. And I just want you guys to watch the time of flight with a 12 foot pound T2 <laughs> rifle, 100 meters. Uh, you could probably do the times crossword in the time it takes all around to land down range. So, you draw your own conclusions, guys. Anyway, this is a tongue in cheek video, and we'll get out, do a little bit of shooting, and yeah, we'll see where we go from there. Alright, cheers, guys. Right, guys, I, I really don't know why I'm doing this. Um, this is absolutely daftness at its finest. Mad dogs and Englishmen and all that. Up there at 45 metres, I'll zoom in in a minute, and you can see where I just roughly zeroed this little prow. And right down the bottom end there, I've got a target at 100 metres. This ain't going to happen. Uh, I'll explain more when I get into the workshop why the target is set the way it is but I'll just zoom in so you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, hopefully I haven't got it out. There's the one at 45 metres and beyond that if I can get this camera to go. Whee. There's the 100 metre target. Um, I'm already thinking this is a ridiculous idea. But hey ho, just for you guys, and just hopefully it'll stay in. The camera's been a bit of a nightmare. Uh, it's about as best as I can do, guys. Uh, to be frank, I, with the wind we've got out here today and everything else, I'd be amazed if I can even hit that big white square, let alone a splatter burst, let alone get a four inch group. Uh, hey ho, let's crack on and find out. I'm going to turn the scope cam on this end. Uh, this might take me a few shots to walk in my rounds. Like a lot of shots actually, it's going to be a few shots. Let's turn the Scope cam on. Good lord. Right, let's zoom out on my scope because I'm going to need to use all my mill dots here. And you guys probably can't see what I'm doing off camera. Basically, what I've done is turn the scope cam on. So you can see the 45 metre target there. And right up there, we've got the 100 metre one. Just going to get this a bit better in focus and adjust my parallax. Alright, I'm going to aim very high on this first shot and see if I can walk the shots down. Um, here goes nothing. Now, I can't tell if I hit that or not. That sounded like a hit. But where it hit, oh, I, I see. I think I see. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be fun. Right. So I need to find my scope right out to about 5 mag. And be further in five mag. See if I can walk these shots in. I really need to get my spot on the scope on because I cannot see where I'm impacting at all. But one thing you guys will certainly appreciate is there's a huge difference between the gun going off and the round strike and target. 
think I'm getting close. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my cameras off and I'm just going to get my spot and scope out because I cannot see where my rounds are landing. Right, I'm just going to going to try again guys um, just going to get a uh, spot and scope out so I'll just turn this off oops come on focus 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 alright right, guys I've got my point of impact this is hilarious, right? I'll get back behind the get back behind the crowd, and I think I should start putting them in on the splatter bursts now. impacted where the crosshair is there but using that as my hold point uh, right let's have a look I think I should now start putting hands hands around the bullseye-ish area no nah, the wind took that but Uh, let's see if we can get hands on there. Well, it's getting closer. Shooting at 100 metres is no joke, that's a phenomenal range for a 12 footer. Yes, going all, all over. Uh, I hope you guys are appreciating the flight time with these rounds going down there. Quite interesting, that's actually the impact of where that cross is, this new bit. Guys, good old PCPs offer a second, very fast second shot, third shot up until you run out of a magazine, then you have to reload. You don't have to do this for a springer. Right. I think, I think, um, I think I've got my hold point. That don't quote me on anything. You'll be able to see that when I put the scope cam footage up. There's the actual drop. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, 
It's very hard talking on the camera, not knowing if that's recording as well. Uh, I do apologise guys, I'm facing away from the camera. Uh, Alright, new magazine then. Give this one last go. Um, I believe my point of impact is somewhere around there. Yeah, if you can hit a bloody lollipop stick with this gun at that range, you're a better shot than me. I don't know where that went up, oh, wanged off into the new loom somewhere. The wind will certainly carry. Oh, and here comes the hail. I think I'll do for this because I already know what the results are. Let's just look through the spot and scope. This is ridiculous guys. Mind you it is windy. I could have closed up the group. But as you can see that's where the this is where I'm shooting from. Is is the gun I'll just shot through, and there you go, 100 meters. Yeah, what I'll do, I'll go and pick up that target, and we'll take it in the right shop, and we'll we'll have a little discussion about it there. Cheers, guys. Well oh guys, what can I say? Right, my conclusion, some thoughts and summary on this little test. Apologies, I didn't chronograph um, anything. I will do so on a nice still calm day. The wind was such today that I have a feeling I'd endangered the crony if I'd have tried to put it through like the the speed bars as such, I don't think that would have worked. Um, right, my views. In relation to the other video, do I think it could be done? In exceptional circumstances, yes I do. It would have to be a flat calm day, absolutely zero wind whatsoever. And it would have to be a different gun from this crown. It really would. I, I do not believe this can perform well enough to group, uh, say, a four inch group a uh, hundred meters. That it may do. I don't know, but I have my doubts. Um, could it be done with slugs? Absolutely not. Not with those Pro Hunter slugs. Um, I'm calling it out, no. Uh, the damn things barely made it past the end of the barrel, so no. Uh, the choke in this barrel and the gun is all set up wrong for shooting slugs through. Um, no. Uh, if 
anyone wants to prove me wrong, please do. Uh, I'd be fascinated. Like I say, this isn't a case of picking holes in people. Uh, I'm all for like uh, pushing the boundaries as such. And I'd love to, to have been able to shoot today these slugs and produce a tiny little cluster at 100 metres. And it, no, it's not going to happen. Um, it, it just it isn't. What I will call that chat me out for is, and you'll see it when I, I recorded this, uh, the actual discharge of shot and the flight time down range. Uh, I'm not going to, I don't believe my skills were a computer enough to uh, marry up uh, me far the me far and the scope cam footage and the stuff on there. So you'll just have to t take uh, what I'm saying as you will. But it'll be on that camera you now watch me on, and then I'll play the scope the actual scope cam footage. But I can assure you there is a big pause between the gun discharging and the rounds hitting target. Uh, which I, I, I don't know what I was trying to prove there because I knew it would. Uh, uh, let's say a 17 HMR shooting at 2,600 feet per second had a, a, a slower time of flight than what I saw this chap he do. So I don't, do I believe it was shot at 100 metres? No, no, not at all. Um, but I, I laid down a challenge, if he wants he can reshoot the video, get his crowl out, get the slugs out, 100 metres over the shoulder camera and a scope cam on there, so we can all watch the time of flight and stuff and see if he can still hit a little lollipop. Right, behind you guys, this is the sciencey bit. Now I had a wind coming over my right shoulder, quarter and going to the left, and you can see, you can all these two shots, this was me trying to find my point of impact. I couldn't see, henceforth I had to get the spot on scope out. For me to be able to accurately, accurately use my mill dots, I had to wind this down to three times magnification just so I could get a, a decent point of aim. I'm sure with a bit of jiggery pokery I could have wound the mag up a little better. But the full of shot that hang, uh, I can find my handy dandy tape measure which is around when you want it hang on guys so bear with me alright ah that was going there right where that little red dot is is more or less where my crosshairs were and the centre of the group was a hundred and five yeah but we'll say a hundred and five uh, centimeters drop which is to US guys a uh, three foot one two three four five but a, about a three and a half foot drop that surprised me I expected it to be considerably more than that but I didn't know if I zoomed the camera in on this target. No, I haven't. Alright, so you can see. Predictably, with the how the wind was going across, it shifted all my impacts off to the left-hand side. Uh, unbelievably, I almost got a dead centre hit on the bullseye. I got some on the horizontal centre line, but the vast majority of my shots pulled off, as you can see, low left, which would take into account the wind drift. These are, I don't, I wouldn't like to include these shots as the main part of the group, because the main part of the group, I would say, is that. I've, 
that one there you'll see on the scope cam footage basically I was just in my point of A and I put it there I then lowered it and then I started grouping down here but the group size even if I add to that one it's a smidgen under 8 inches or 19 centimetres uh, for this chappy he was shooting at a tiny little target that big mm, I don't know what to suggest guys I'm leaving it up to you to make your own conclusions uh, whatever way if he was really doing at 100 metres his gun his shooting ability and his slugs are a hell of a lot better on uh, my stuff and my ability but this is real world footage shot in windy weather I dare say without the wind I could have used my scope uh, windage and actually adjusted these off and got these more central but I believe I'd only be able to group nah. I reckon I'm looking at this measure it. I reckon about five inch group. But yeah, but like I say, where I'm going with all this, there's a different from gun discharge to pellet strike. There's a hell of a like um, time lapse there. And I do believe if I was using slugs which would have been shot even slower than the pellets I was using. I mean, I've gone, instead of a 17 grain, uh, grain slug, I've gone to a 14.5. It'd been even slower, and I predict with slugs, if they had a functioned as they should have done, I'd have probably got a green plan than then here. But like I say, guys, it's all a bit of fun. Uh, yeah, what can I say? Uh, well, leave it for you guys to join, uh, draw your conclusions. And as always, guys, thanks for your continued support. And I'm soaking wet because we've got April showers, hailstorms, and everything out there. Stand by for another video on Friday. I'll probably post it up. On Friday, I want to. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do Friday. Uh, but we'll do something interesting anyway. Cheers guys.